and welcome to St. Jude the Apostle Parish as we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Ordinary Time. In today's Gospel account of Jesus entering Capernaum, those who heard his teaching and witnessed him drive out an unclean spirit are astonished. Their amazement is due to the authority of Christ, who is God himself. Are you too in awe at the work of God in our lives? Please join in singing our gathering song found in your worship, Canticle of the Sun. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. To prepare ourselves for this most holy Eucharist, let us acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you give life to your people. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to eternal happiness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, This was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, 
how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Those of you knew I was going on vacation last week to California. They wished me all the best and they all told me to bring warm weather from California. And I really tried, but I forgot my baggage there. It's on its way, on its way. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, we heard in the gospel that when Jesus taught in the synagogue, his teaching had a deep impression because Jesus taught them with authority. The reason is very simple, that Jesus is the Word made flesh. What Jesus taught is not just a word, 
not just few sentences, not just few passages, not few verses, not just some chapters, but Jesus is the Word himself. That's why every word of Jesus had that power and authority. You remember when Jesus says, said something, it happened exactly the same way. Lazarus, come out of the tomb. He came to life. In the sea, calm, and the storm calmed. Likewise, everywhere, there was no one instance where Jesus uttered and it did, did not happen. That is because he is the author and the origin of everything that he said. So therefore, people were astonished. They saw the power of Jesus in the synagogue. He just told the evil spirit just to be quiet and then come out of him, and he did obey. My dear brothers and sisters, what we need to understand today is this. The word that we read, the word that we listen to, or the word that we reflect upon is so powerful. It is not just a story to listen to. It's not just a narration given by somebody. But at the same time, every bit of that scripture is inspired by God and the origin is God himself. And therefore, the word that we are called to reflect upon becomes effective in our lives when we apply it to our own lives. And we have great examples in the lives of great people. Saul, who was all out to kill the Christians, the followers of Jesus, just one word changed his life totally. Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And that pierced his heart so much and helped him to reflect what he was doing. And then after that, the one who started his journey to be a murderer became the follower of Jesus Christ, the apostle. St. Augustine, the one who buried himself in the prep pleasures of this world, one day when he opened the scripture, he happened to read one of the letters of St. Paul, and his eyes went and then, you know, fell on one particular verse. And that changed his life for the battle. A total 180 degrees radical change in his life. Afterwards, when he was reflecting back about his life, he said, how late did I realize this? In other words, he says, at least now I realized, and now I'm enjoying my life. Mother Teresa, who was already a nun in a convent, but then there was something deep deeper that was going on in her heart. That, she, that, the, that the Lord is calling her to do. One word again, I thirst. This is one of the seven words of Jesus from the cross. That word fell on her ears and pierced her heart so much that she wanted to quench the thirst of Jesus in all those suffering on the streets of Calcutta in India. And that became 
the source of our new ministry, serving the poor and the destitute. Again, a hundred percent change in the lives of the people. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, these are only few examples, but we have millions of examples. The word of God is so powerful because it comes across to us in our life situation alive. The power of this word of God is so much. If today we are sad, we have a word of encouragement in the scriptures. If today we are struggling, we have God strengthening us once again when we read the word of God. It can be an inspiration. It can be anything. It comes alive. The word of God is not something that was said only 2,000 years ago. But this word speaks to us right now, at this moment, to each one of us personally. That is because it is not the sentence that we read, it is not the word that we listen to, but it is Jesus speaking to us. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, it is time for us to reflect and then see where is my interest? When we are listening to the word of God at Mass, how much do I really follow that? Do I ever ask, what is the Lord teaching me right now? Or can I get into this habit of learning or reading one verse a day? Maybe one psalm as a test for ourselves as a kind of, you know, that we may grow interest in reading the Word of God and reflecting on the Word of God, when you perhaps get home, read Psalm number 23. Just kind of, you know, in a meditative manner. And just see how much you will, you will enjoy the peace of the Lord with you. Speaking about uh, the importance of the Word of God, celebrating the Sunday of the Word of God last weekend, this is what Pope Francis said. Let us not ignore God's Word. It is a love letter written to us by the one who knows us best. In reading it, we again hear his voice, see his face, and receive his spirit. The word of God is an antidote to our fear of having to face life. In speaking to us, the Lord reminds us that we are in his heart. We are precious in his eyes and that he holds us in the palm of his hand. God personally communicates through the Word of God. If we fail to know the Word of God more, listen to it, fail to listen to it attentively, then we will live in ignorance of God's Word. And St. Jerem, who translated the Bible into Latin, because of which we have all these translations, this is what he says. Ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, the challenge and the decision is ours. How are we going to grow in the word of God? At our parish, we have wonderful opportunities. Every week, the Bible study goes on. I think it's both in person and online. Throughout the year, we have one book or the other, the Bible studies going on. And I'm glad that so many of you participate. But we can all learn. Our life will not be an enough to understand all of this scripture. To me, reading the scripture every time in preparation for Mass, every time that I read, it comes alive and new to us. 
and it will happen to you the same. Let us during this Holy Mass ask the Lord to help us understand his word so that his word becomes a light for our path in our Christian life. Amen. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring our intentions to the Father this day, amazed at the work he does in our lives. For the Holy Father and all bishops and priests, may they encounter the bountiful blessings of the Spirit as they teach and lead the faithful. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all government officials, may God grant them the courage to make decisions out of love, mercy, and justice that support the dignity and sanctity of all life. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For families in conflict, may the grace of God move in and through them to bring about healing and reconciliation. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may the Lord sow seeds that bear much fruit in building up his kingdom on earth. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died this past week, especially Elaine Spambauer, Gregory Herdina, and for those who are mourning the loss of someone dear to them. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs within our prayer boxes, the needs expressed through the prayer chain, and for those held within the silence of our hearts. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, including those for the repose of the soul of Marilyn Ream, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join me in praying the prayer to good St. Joseph, found in your order of worship. Good St. Joseph, as, as you, you led, led the, the Holy, Holy Family, family watch, watch over our, our families. families. Help, Help our family and all families to know and share God's love. In our, in our family, family relationships, may we find healing and seek to be holy. May our fathers help us to become faithful disciples of Jesus who share our love for him. As foster father of Jesus, watch over all who serve as spiritual fathers in a special way Bless our Holy Father, our Bishop, and our priests. May they follow your humble example in their fatherly care 
for the people of God, the church. With Mary, you raised Jesus the high priest. You know our need for priests. Please raise up good and holy priests from our families to serve the people of our diocese. May our children and grandchildren hear and say yes to the call of Jesus, just as you and Mary did. Good Saint Joseph, pray for us. Our preparation song is in your worship aid, Look Beyond. my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, let the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, as spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be quiet's eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. of God, behold, he takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ to keep us safe for eternal life. communion song is in your worship aid. Be not afraid.
This week is Catholic Schools Week, and I invite Dan and Jackson Butke to speak to us on behalf of our school system lords. Thank you, Father. Good afternoon, everyone. So as he said, we're, we're really here to talk a little bit about Catholic schools in general, but specifically Lourdes Academy right here in our backyard. Um, Lourdes is something that's especially important to, to our family. Um, so I don't want to speak uh, in the greater good of, of Catholic education, but more specifically how it's impacted our family. So my wife, Chelsea, and I, um, we actually went to Lourdes ourselves started dating there. Um, five kids later, here, here we are with you uh, today. So something good certainly from our family has come uh, out of Lourdes Academy. And, and speaking on my side of the family, um, our kids now, ranging from sixth grade down to kindergarten, they're actually third generation. Uh, we're a third generation Lourdes family. My mom graduated from there when she was younger as well. Um, on Chelsea's side of the family, her brother also went to school there. He has now taken his first vows uh, to become a Jesuit. And her sister, um, she actually ended up marrying one of Deacon Pat's sons. And with their eight children, the oldest seven of them are now in Lourdes as well. So it, it's clearly a, a family affair for us. It, it's obvious to everyone this has been a challenging year for a variety of reasons. Um, but I think the importance of Lourdes specifically this year, has meant a lot to all of us. First and foremost, Lourdes has been, since the start of the school year, um, teaching in person. We're right next door at that building. Our kids are there every day, with the exception of a small hiatus over the, the holidays. Um, we've been there in person. That's critically important for, for Chelsea and I as parents to have our kids there, really living that, that, that faith on a daily basis. Um, certainly, there is, there's daily prayer, and there's weekly masses, and not to, I guess, not to discount the importance of those aspects. Those are very important things that our kids um, experience every, every week as being Lourdes students, but it's really the, the full immersion that we see in their faith all day long, whether it's our fourth grader, Liam, learning how to be more Christ-like at recess, or our third grader, Reagan, singing church hymns in music class. Or our second grader, Zoe, preparing for a big sacrament year with First Reconciliation and First Communion. We, we, see, we see that in our kids and all the kids throughout the system. And I think it really starts with, with the teachers. I can't say enough about the staff that we have at Lourdes. Um, one... one I guess, memory from this year that really sticks out for me. Our, our family ended up having to be quarantined for a while this fall, and as you can imagine, with five kids, it, it takes a while for viruses to kind of cycle their way through a house. So we were, we were on lockdown for, for about three weeks leading up to, to Thanksgiving, and while we were out, our kindergartner, Elin, she missed a, a project in school to make Christmas ornaments. So shortly before Christmas, her kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Bernhagen, came to the house and did a project with her at our house to make an ornament because she missed it out, out of it in school. Right? To me, that's going above and beyond what we ask of most teachers, but that's par for the course here at Lourdes. And that's on top of, while we were also out, the principal, Mrs. Jeffers, stopping by our house a couple of days a week to drop off assignments and check in on us on our way home from work. That's just, that's the way Lourdes is. It's, 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 it's a family, and we see that, that stewardship from the teachers, it extends to the students as well. We have high schoolers that fulfill service hours as they lead up to graduation. We have uh, various charitable things happening at the elementary school next door, donating foods for, for, for father cars. Um, I know we haven't seen it here lately, but uh, many times the altar servers you see up here, hopefully they'll be back soon. Uh, those are often lured students. So it's that, that stewardship continuing to pay it forward um, through our students as well, a, as part of the community, and, and especially for the parish. And that really, that's why we are here today, is to, to acknowledge the importance of the parish, all of you, Father Lewis, the staff. Um, Lourdes wouldn't be possible without 
all of you, your, your prayers, your financial support, all of it. So we, we really just want to take a moment to say thank you, and that's enough of me talking. I think there's a, a student here that I think would also like to uh, just, just say a few words. So thank you for your time. Hi, my name is Jackson, and I'm a sixth grader over at Lourdes Academy. I love many things about Lourdes, but mostly the athletic program. It has been especially cool this basketball season because I have been lucky enough to move up to help the eighth graders, and also the day, and also a few days ago, I was able to help out my brother's fourth grade team. We all kind of work together like a family. Lourdes definitely feels like a family, especially during this pandemic. The teachers and staff have made it possible for us to continue to stay connected. We've also all been given a Chromebook to help us during this time. To finish, we would like to thank all of you, Father Lewis and Deacon Pat, for your spiritual and financial support that makes all of these things possible. Thank you. Thank you, Dan and Jackson, for the great job. And once again, I would like to reiterate all that you have expressed now. On behalf of Lourdes, I would like to thank you personally for your great support of Catholic school system here in Oshkosh. Lourdes, as a Catholic school, is not just another institution, but a place of all-round development of our Catholic children, the future of our church. Thank you once again for your great support, and I humbly appeal to your continued support in the future. A few announcements. Spiritus team is leading the high school Alpha Retreat tomorrow, Sunday. On behalf of the Spiritus team, I appeal to you to help them financially to continue their ministry of leading the young people to the Lord. If you are making Valentine's Day cards for Bethel Home, there are drop-off baskets in, fr in the front and in the back of the church, or you can slip them into the mail slot at the parish office. The deadline is February 11th. For details, please see the bulletin. You are invited to bring your old palms back to church and place them in the baskets at the entrances of the church. Thank you, and God bless you. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help of eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Be to God. Our sending forth song is Lead Me, Lord. <laughs> 